What's good, EYTBC? What's good, fight fans, boxing heads around the world? Be Marsh with another boxing video. So this is my part two for um, boxers who I believe don't belong or don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. And um, this guy I'm about to talk about, this particular vid, I'm going to try squeezing two guys who I don't think uh, deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. And this one right here, first guy I'm going to go in on is a guy named Riddick Bowe. Riddick Bowe out of Brooklyn, New York. Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. You know what I'm saying? A guy who never got to fight um, guys like Lennox Lewis or Mike Tyson or... You know, he only fought Evander Holyfield, and I'm about to get into it. And I think that's the only reason why he's in the Hall of Fame, because of his trilogy with, um, uh, what's his name, uh, with, with Evander Holyfield, you know what I mean? To me, this guy, Riddick Bowe, was a fighter who had a lot of promise, especially when he beat Holyfield the first time, you know what I mean? He did his thing, and he beat him decisively, you know what I'm saying? But he never got to fight guys like uh, George Foreman. Or even Larry Holmes. I'm talking about older guys that guys like Holyfield fought. You know what I mean? He never got to fight guys like Mike Tyson. Or even a fight a guy like Lennox Lewis. Who I believe Riddick Bowe could have beat. When he had when he had beat Holyfield. I believe that version of uh, Riddick Bowe could have beat Lennox Lewis. At that particular time. You know what I'm saying? About 92, 93. You know? But um, that's for another video. Matter of fact, I already made a video for that. Go ahead. Check it out on my contra uh, not controversial decisions. What is it? Um, my series of uh, fights that we didn't get to see. Actually, that was the very first video I did when I came on the YTBC about uh, fights we didn't get to see. Riddick Bowe versus Lennox Lewis. A fight that I said, in my opinion, I think uh, Riddick Bowe would have won in 92-93. All right. Well, he became a champion. He beat Holyfield fair and square. No shame in his game. No doubt about it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the man Riddick Bowe... Man, he had a horrific defense, man. He ain't fight nobody when he fought when he when he had the belts, you know what I mean? When he snatched three three of them belts and lineal titles from uh Riddick Bo, you know what I'm saying? Who who'd he fight? He fought Michael Dokes, a washed up pipehead, you know what I'm saying? Michael Dokes was had been a pipehead at them times. You know what I'm saying? He had been a guy who had substance substance abuse problems. And that guy, man, was well out of his prime, you know what I mean? That was a weak fight by Riddick Bowe. He shouldn't have never fought Michael Dokes. That was a guy that Holyfield had washed years ago. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Then um, who did he fight again? He fought another journeyman by the name of Jesse Ferguson. And uh, that fight was in Washington, D.C. You know what I'm saying? I believe that was the day uh, that uh, that B-Hop B -Hop beat, uh, I'm sorry, Roy Jones beat B-Hop at RFK Stadium where the Redskins used to play. You know what I mean? That was like in 93. 93 at RFK, you know what I'm saying? Jesse Ferguson was a nobody, okay? Then the man went on to fight uh, Evander Holyfield, a fight that was pretty close. It was a close fight. Unfortunately, it was interrupted by Fan Man, you know what I'm saying? Fan Man was the creep who flew in through with a kind of propel on his back, you know what I'm saying? And, and he fell into the ring, came out, you know, it was in Caesar's Palace, an outdoor joint, you know what I'm saying? And he he came and he interrupted the fight. I believe it was like, what I, What round was it? I'm not too sure. Was it eighth round? I can't even remember, man. But I remember as a kid seeing that shit live. And I'll never forget that shit. Well, they proceeded, man. The fans proceeded to beat the shit out of Fan Man, man. And he deserved that beating. And that fight got delayed for 30 minutes. And it was a fight that, you know, I could say that the man Riddick Bowe was winning, man. And maybe, you know, that uh, little intermission, that 30-minute intermission, man. Gave the man uh, Evander Holyfield a chance to regain his, uh, you know, his strength and come back and beat the man slightly. You know what I mean? Beat Riddick Bull slightly. You know what I'm saying? A real close fight. You check it. So um, you know, that was that fight, Fan Man. You know what I'm saying? Then the man uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Um. Riddick Bowe went on to fight guys that English guy, Herbie Hyde. I believe that was for the WBO title. I think that's when Riddick Bowe became a two-time world champ. You know what I mean? He got that WBO strap, beat Herbie Hyde. He knocked him out in six rounds. Then he beat another Cuban, uh, Jorge Gonzalez. You know what I'm saying? He knocked him out in six rounds in Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? You check it. Then he dropped the belt. He vacated that WBO strap. And then he fought a guy, he fought Holyfield, and you know what I'm saying, in a classic fight, a fight that Holyfield had dropped him, dropped the big Riddick Bow, man, you know what I'm saying, I believe this is it, the highlights right there, yeah, because the man had the yellow, the yellow shorts, 
You know what I'm saying? Riddick Bo I'm sorry, Evander Holyfield had the, the and he ain't have no hair at them times, you know what I mean? Okay? So um you know, it's a classic fight. He stopped Holyfield, man. We thought Holyfield would be done if, in his career, but he still went on to do big things after that, you know, beat Mike Tyson up, stuff like that. Um, but anyways, you know, a fight that he, that, that's a fight that Riddick Bo, you know what I mean? He won, and then he went on to fight guys like, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Two, he had two fights with, um, with uh with Andrew Galata, the big Polish guy, you know what I'm saying? Two two classic fights, but both of them ended in disqualifications and Riddick Bo won because this guy punched him. This guy was a was a habitual nut puncher, man. He punched him in the Bozak bout. He punched him, man, numerous times in both fights. In both fights, believe it or not, ladies and gents, boxing heads and fight fans around the world, believe it or not, both of these fights, Riddick Bo was down on the scorecards. You know what I'm saying? He was down on the scorecards, but this guy, this Polish guy, Andrew Galata, who was trained by, by what's his name, by, by Lou Duva, man, especially the first fight, man. The first fight was crazy, man. He punched him in the Bozak, then there was a big melee, there was a riot, a, a riot. I believe that fight was in MSG, Madison Square Garden. There was a big fight, Lou Duva even got put on a stretcher. We thought the man might die, you know what I'm saying, might catch a heart attack. He was an old man in the middle of a melee. It was just all around wrong. And, you know, that was the second time Riddick Boy has been involved in a fight where at least the crowd got into it and was beating the shit out of people, you know what I mean? You check it. That's a classic fight, man. You could even hear the man George Foreman telling people, hey, son, don't do it. Don't do it because there's people fighting around him. They was probably trying to jump in there and beat the shit out of Jim Lampley. But George Foreman was his protector that night, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that was a fight like Galata was winning. And in the second fight, Galata was winning again. Galata had even dropped Riddick Bo. Riddick Bo looked like a shell of his former self. But he got saved by this guy's... um. Andrew Galata not being a, of sane and stable mind and just <laughs> keeping his composure and not hitting the guy in the Bozak, you know what I'm saying? Even when they would train, Lou Duva would train, um, have training camp with um, Galata, he'd have Galata, he'd put shorts on a, on a heavy bag and show the man Galata where to punch. You got to punch above the shorts, you know what I'm saying? Torso, chest area, and head, nothing below, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know, after that, the man Riddick Bo retired, you know what I'm saying? And he had numerous problems outside of the ring, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think the man went to federal prison for kidnapping. He even tried kickboxing. He came back to boxing. I'm not even going to talk about those guys he fought after he came back. I think it was in 2004. Because those guys are nobodies. I don't even know them, you know what I'm saying? So basically, his career end was basically ended when he fought Galata. Now, how many, how many Hall of Famers did this guy beat? He's only beat one. And he beat him twice. Sure, he beat um, Evander Holyfield twice. But to me, beating Evander Holyfield twice does not get you into the Hall of Fame, man. I'm sorry. It does not get you in the Hall of Fame. This guy, Riddick Bo, what's his record? I believe he was like 43-1 and one with 33 KOs. You know what I mean? He was an undisciplined guy. He was a guy who kind of used to eat himself out. He can't eat himself out of the division, but you can eat yourself out of being a championship and a, a, a championship contender, you know what I'm saying? And that's what he did, man. Riddick Bo had a lot of promise, you know what I'm saying? He, he lost the fight in, in the Olympics to Lennox Lewis in the gold medal game. You know, a controversial decision in my opinion, you know, but... um. And that was in Seoul, Korea. But beating guys like Herbie Hyde, Jesse Ferguson, uh, Michael Dokes, uh, Jorge Gonzalez, two disqualifications that he was losing on the cards to the Galata. Man, that doesn't make him a qual qualify to him to be a Hall of Famer. So no, he's not a Hall of Famer in my opinion. Riddick Bowe is a guy who I believe he still lives out in, in, in Maryland, not too far from where I'm at, out here in the DMV area. Not far from D.C. He's, uh, I think he's in Fort Washington, Maryland. I believe it even is his manager. What was that crazy guy? What the fuck was that guy's name? <sighs> With the southern accent. Fuck. What the fuck was that guy's name? Damn, man. He had a beard and a bald head. The guy even got into a fight right there when, when that man... Riddick Bo got into a fight where this guy was kicking and throwing kicks at him. What the fuck was his name? Newman. Somebody Newman. Somebody Newman. Um, 
it's on the tip of my tongue, y'all. Um, was somebody Newman, Rock Newman, or somebody? Somebody I can't remember, man. It's gonna come to me later. All right, the second guy I'm about to talk about who don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame is a guy by the name of Ingemir Johannesson. Ingemir Johannesson was a guy from Sweden whose claim to fame was beating Floyd Patterson, who at the time was uh, the world champion, the undisputed world champion of the world. You know what I'm saying? Floyd Patterson. You check it? And um, this guy, Ing Ingemir Johannesson, was a guy... Who'd he beat, man, other than Floyd Patterson? And to me, that was a lucky fight. Okay, he beat him. Maybe Floyd Patterson was sleeping on him and not taking... Uh, you know, was not um, paying attention to this guy in 1959. You know what I'm saying? He beat him. I believe it was by TKO, third round. You know what I'm saying? He dropped him about six or seven times in the third in, in that fight, especially in the third round. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And the, but then the man um, Floyd Patterson got his rematch. You know what I'm saying? And he he be, got his rematch twice. The first time he beat the man, he stopped him. I believe in um he, he beat he, he knocked him out in the fifth round. You know what I'm saying? He knocked him out in the fifth round, and in the third fight, the rubber match, Johansson and Floyd Patterson, he KO'd him in the sixth round, you know what I'm saying? You check it, this guy only beat guys like, um, who do you fight? He beat guys like, um, what's, your, what's his name? A guy who beat Joey Maxim twice, um, damn, oh, fuck is his name, man? <sighs> Eddie Matchin, Eddie Matchin, you check it, that's the only guy that he beat other than Floyd Patterson once, you know what I mean? And um and the other guy um he beat was uh, Henry Cooper, you know what I mean? A guy Muhammad Ali built beat a guy from England, you know what I'm saying, who did floor Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali came off the canvas and beat the shit out of him, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know, this guy you know, this Ingemir Johannesson from Sweden, you know, he, he was the athlete of the year in fifty nine after he beat Patterson, was also the sports illustrated sportsman of the year. Okay. He beat Patterson, man, and you know Patterson was the first man to ever become a to uh to ever become a two time heavyweight champion. You know what I'm saying? To after avenging his loss to Johannesson, okay. But to me, Johannesson don't belong in the Hall of Fame, man. I'm sorry. Beating Floyd Patterson, Eddie Matchin, and and Burke Cooper and these guys, these these are the best guys on his resume. And I don't believe these guys warrant him to a spot into the Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? So you know. That's two guys I mentioned, you know what I'm saying? And these two guys are in the heavyweight division. Yeah, two guys. Johannesson, um, was he the lineal he I, I believe he was a lineal champ when he beat um when he beat uh when he beat Floyd Patterson, you know what I'm saying? So him and Riddick Bo, no, no doubt about it, they've been lineal champs, you know what I mean? Riddick Bo beat Holyfield, who was the man, you know what I'm saying? In the man of the division, you know what I mean? So I'll give him credit for that. They were both lineal champs. But I don't think neither of these guys were in the should belong or deserve to be in the International Boxing Hall of Fame in Canastota, New York. You know what I'm saying? I mentioned the guys they beat, the best guys on their on their resume. You know, Riddick Bowe, he beat um, uh, Terrell Biggs. Terrell Biggs is a guy. He's a good fighter, was, but he's not a guy who gets you in the Hall of Fame list. You know what I'm saying? Beating guys like um, Jesse Ferguson, Dokes, all these guys I mentioned. They don't get the guy into the Hall of Fame, you know what I'm saying? Eddie, uh, Andrew Galata was giving him work. That's that's when Floyd Patterson got dropped by Johan, by this Johannesson guy. But, you know, these guys, they don't. I don't think they belong to be in the Hall of Fame. I'm not dissing them or taking nothing away from their careers. But uh, <laughs> you can't compare these guys' resumes or what they've done in their career to legends like, you know, maybe like Jack Johnson, Muhammad Ali. Even Mike Tyson, you know what I'm saying? Or Evander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis, you know, so I'm, so I'm even Sonny Liston, you know what I mean? All these guys have accomplished more than Riddick Bowe and Johannes, Ingemir Johann, Johansson, you know what I'm saying? So ladies and gents in the, boxing, in the boxing world, let me know in the comment section what you guys think and if you agree with me. And if you disagree, let me know too in the comment section. Do you think these two guys believe, belong in the Boxing Hall of Fame? I don't. So, so far, I've, I've done three guys. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, that was the first vid. In part two, I did Riddick Bowe and uh, Ingemir Johansson. So let me know in the comment section. If you like the content, hit that thumbs up and please subscribe. Be Marsh Boxing and again. Thanks for listening. Peace.